Today I'm going to answer another question by a student who goes by the name of Flurng. And his question is on the video about small signal amplifiers. And the question is, howdy Bob, yet another fantastic video. Thank you. I do have one question, however, in the last scenario where we have the voltage trying to go low but bouncing back up. I suspect this would be due to the negative resistance effect of the emitter base junction. Would that be a correct assumption? I hope you don't mind me having a little fun with your screen name and thanks again for another good question. And uh, my intuition would be yeah, that that's absolutely right. I can't see what else could cause that. Let me talk about what we're talking about real quickly. If we take a look at our small signal amplifier, so here is our NPN transistor. And we have a power supply over here, collector resistor. I'll put a remitter resistor in here because I can. There's our output. And here is our bias resistors here. And an input. So put 10 volts here because we can and so as we put a signal in here we're going to get an amplified signal coming out here remember it's going to be reversed 180 degrees so when this voltage is going up this voltage is going down and so we get a bigger signal coming out which depends on the HFE of the transistor the gain of the transistor remember HFE or in this case more properly with the lowercase fe because we're talking about the uh, dynamic gain or the small signal gain where uh, the HFE changes with the parameters. So as our voltage goes up and down, our HFE changes. And so we're taking a look at the difference in the change compared to the difference in the change. So it gets a little complicated, but uh, watch the video on small signal transistors if you're not following this and come back and see what we're talking about. But anyway, Depending on the HFE of the transistor and the resistors around it and the input voltage, we're going to get a certain amount of amplification through this resistor. Now the problem is, as this voltage goes up, we get more current into the base, which means more current into the collector. And what's going to happen? As we pull more current through the collector, what's going to happen here? more current through the collector resistor means a greater voltage across it. Now this is anchored at 10 volts up here. Let me get these out of the way. So that's anchored at plus 10 volts. So as this voltage becomes greater across here, it's going to be a higher voltage here and a lower voltage there. Remember, the voltage is always higher where conventional current enters the resistance and lower where it exits. So that voltage is going to get greater and greater and so since this can't change and the voltage gets bigger and this voltage must be lower, that means it's going to get lower and lower and lower. Kind of think of it as, as a suction pulling out of the harder you pull on it, the lower that voltage is going to go. And eventually we're going to go below our zero volts because we have plus 10 volts here, zero volts here because that's where we have our oscilloscope probe or voltmeter anchored. Remember that zero volts is always where the black lead or the ground lead of your measuring circuit is. So there's zero volts plus 10 volts. And as this voltage goes down, eventually it's going to reach uh, zero volts. In reality, it's going to be something higher because of the resistance here. Okay. Have current going through that resistance. So that voltage here will be something greater than zero. And at the greatest amount of current here, we're going to get maybe around four tenths of a volt from here to here. But eventually this is going to get as low as it can go and it's going to bottom out. Can't get any lower. That's what saturation is. When we get to a point where increasing our voltage on the base no longer causes a change in the collector, we have reached a state of saturation. The voltage has gone as far down as it can possibly go. So increasing our base voltage is not going to bring it down any further. But what happens sometimes is I have observed that as that voltage goes down, it hits its bottom limit, get a little bounce. That's an observation I've made. I don't have anyone else talking about that. It's just something I've seen when I've put circuits like this on an oscilloscope, see that little bounce there, so I mentioned it. Um, and Mr. Flurng says, I think that's probably caused by negative resistance. Yeah, that makes perfect sense that would be caused by negative resistance. So what the heck are we talking about? Well, let's talk about what negative resistance is first. 
And let's look at a device called a tunnel diode because it's famous for its negative resistance. Let's make a graph of a typical diode curve. Let's see, this would be zero volts, and this would be one volt here. Put 0.5 volts there. So there's 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and one volt, and 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0.1. Okay, so there's our voltages, and your typical diode, a typical silicon diode, as we increase our voltage, here is our current. I'm not going to put a particular number here. Oh, let's just put, oh, how about 10 milliamps, just because we can. So as we increase that voltage across the diode, it's going to go up very slightly, very slightly, very slightly, but right at about half a volt for a silicon diode, it's going to start turning the corner, and eventually right around here, it's going to go up like that. So we get an exponential curve where we suddenly get a cascade of current as we go above 7 tenths of a volt. Now this can keep on going wherever it needs to. Uh, the myth is that this won't go above 7 tenths of a volt. Oh yes it will. If we keep increasing the current we're going to get more voltage. But typically we can expect around 7 tenths of a volt. A tunnel diode is going to act a little differently. It's going to go up like that very linearly. It's going to act like a resistor. A resistor, if you double the voltage, you double the current. So we double the voltage, double the current, double the voltage, double the current. And so it goes up in a straight line, not exponential like this, but linear. But a tunnel diode gets up to a certain current and something weird happens. It rounds off and increasing the voltage no longer increases the current. And then it turns around and goes the other way. Increasing our voltage causes a decrease in current. That is opposite of Ohm's law. Ohm's law says you double the voltage, you double the current. Now we're doubling our voltage and we get a decrease in current. But that only happens to a certain point and eventually it meets up with the standard diode curve and off it goes. So during this region here, where increasing the voltage causes a decrease in current, we call that negative resistance. Now, interesting thing is, if we take a NPN transistor, normally we're going to bias this with this more positive than that. Higher voltage, lower voltage. That's the way we normally bias a transistor, an NPN transistor. And if we put current in here, we get an increased current here. Okay, that's how it works. However, if we reverse that, and let's put a battery here just because we can, put some resistance in here just because we really will need to in the real world, and I have the battery set up negative to positive, let's make that a variable battery because we can. As I increase that, we're going to find that this reverse biased junction set here, remember your transistor is essentially, here's our model of transistor junctions, N, P, N, so N material, P material, N material, and normally we have this positive to negative, right now that's reversed, negative to positive, and for reasons that I have not looked into, but as NPN transistors, when you bias them like this, they act like a tunnel diode. So we're going to have that same phenomenon with a reverse biased collector collector to emitter junction set of an NPN transistor. So, now the question is, is that funny little bounce we sometimes get on the oscilloscope when we saturate the transistor, is that due to negative resistance? Well, let's take a closer look at the circuit and see if that could be true. So here we have there's our transistor. Put an emitter resistor here because we need to, for this to work, we have to have that somewhat isolated from our uh, ground. There's our input. Let's put a battery over here. Collector resistor. And we have some circuitry over here causing an input. Now let's see what's going to happen. Let's have an output here because we need that. Okay, so we start 
by putting some current in here as the current goes in our current through this resistor and through the transistor increases so that current goes up and our voltage will be going downwards so this voltage will be going down let's say that's a 10 volt battery so as this voltage goes up the voltage comes down and eventually it's going to reach a point where it can't get any lower so it's going to bottom out so what happens there well let's just say that the amount of current going through here, I don't want to use actual numbers, I think that might confuse the issue, but we have enough current flowing through this resistor that the current in resistor, let's say that adds up to, oh, let's say about plus three volts. So we've reached saturation. Remember, saturation is I increase my signal at the base, I can no longer get a change at the collector. So as I increase this signal, the voltage goes down, eventually it bottoms out, we're increasing the signal, can't make it go down any further. I've reached saturation. So there's my bottom right there. But there's that bottom, let's see, three volts here. And in saturation, this isn't always true, but typically your transistors will have around four tenths of a volt in saturation. So I can expect about 3.4 volts there. So that's the point there. We've reached the bottom at 3.4 volts because I can't get below that because Whatever current and resistor combination I have here is giving me three volts at the saturation point when that current reaches that point. This is going to be about four tenths of a volt higher, so there we are. Now what's going to happen? I'm going to be increasing this current. And that is going to increase the current through this resistor, which is going to cause that voltage to go up. Hmm. Well, if this goes up to, let's say, three 0.2 volts this is going to have to be about four tenths of a volt higher so that's going to have to go to about 3.6 volts oh it's just a consequence of the current flowing from the base to the emitter and through the emitter resistor the more current i put through there the voltage must increase remember the voltage will increase as i put more current there the voltage must be higher where the conventional current goes in and lower where it comes out. This is anchored at zero volts. That voltage will have to increase. So as I increase my base current, I'm going to increase my emitter current, forcing this voltage up, and that forces that voltage up, and there's what causes our bounce. So it's not negative resistance. I was thinking I was going to go a different way. I was thinking, oh, this voltage could go up and become higher than that voltage. And that could reverse bias the collector to emitter stack and could cause it to go into negative resistance. That's the direction I thought I was going to go. But now looking at it, ah, close examination, it's not negative resistance. It's just the fact that as we increase the current through this resistor, the voltage must go up and that forces the collector voltage up. And that's what's going to cause our little bounce. And then as, when this decreases and finally brings that back down, it's going to come out of saturation and back up it goes. So... I think I just proved you wrong, and me too. I, my first impression was, yeah, negative resistance could be causing that, and that's the direction I was going when I was thinking about this. Once again, I was thinking, as this voltage goes up, it could become higher than that voltage, and what's going on in the transistor could isolate them in such a way that that could happen, but I think it's much more likely that as this voltage goes up, it forces this voltage up. We expect about four tenths of a volt between them, and as it forces that voltage up, there's where we get that little bounce. So it looks like we both learned something here. I was going down one path and ended up going another path. So I think the answer is no. I don't think it's negative resistance causing that little bounce. Just the consequence of the increased current through the emitter resistor. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.